Good evening, this is Dr. Arberg, and uh, today's episode will discuss finite element analysis of cantilever beam using LISA. Before we use uh, the same analysis with Autodesk Inventor, uh, we receive the results. We have a cantilever beam which has one meter length, uh, 20 millimeter width, and 100 millimeter height. And what we like to do is compare it with the uh, results of, uh, we'll get from Lisa. So we open up Lisa, and uh, we, this is our workspace. Uh, we could uh, choose uh, an element over here, which is uh, the element is um, a cubicle uh, element, uh, volumetric element that we could uh, actually size to the cantilever size using the scale. So the scale factor in the X direction will be uh, 20 millimeters, 0 0.02. Uh, in the Y direction will be 0 0.1, which is uh, 100 millimeters, and uh, in the Z direction, it will be one meter. Next thing what we like to do is we like to refine it. So we will uh, come to the place over here where we can select all. We come to the mesh tool and we refine it uh, custom wise. We will uh, keep uh, the, uh, the, the in the X direction, we'll divide the beam into uh, two sectors. In a Y direction, we'll divide it into five sectors. And in the Z direction, we'll define it into 10 sectors. When we apply, we'll see the new mesh over here. And uh, we could uh, displace it and enlarge it as uh, we need. Next, what we like to do is uh, right-click on the analysis, edit, and choose static 3D analysis, and OK that. The geometry has been defined over here. Then what we like to do is we like to select all the components over here and assign them a material. So we assign a new material over here, which is isotropic, and we're choose aluminum for the inventor. So we'll use the same here, 70 gigapascal. So we have to add nine zeros to the 70. And the Poisson ratio 0 0.2. And we'll use 2,700 kilogram per meter square cube for the density. Uh, we close that, and now we have uh, uh, assigned the material. The next thing we like to do is assign the names where we will apply the loads and the constraints. So this end will be our constraint, and what we will do, we will uh, define it, and we come to a name section, right click, new face selection, and then we have 10 faces. We rename it as uh, support. So we type support. And then we click OK. Next, what we like to do is to assign the node where we apply the force. It will be the center node at the top. And we rename it. So we will uh, have here a new node selection. There's one node, right click that and rename and click over here and name it as load. The next thing that we like to do is we like to come here, right click and assign the new fix support to the surface which we defined as support. And now the surface is being designated as being supported. We right click the loading constraints and we assign a new force in a y direction. We want to have a positive 1000 newtons to be the same as we used in inventor. And we select over here 
the point of application, which we called a load, and here's the force. We are now ready to do the analysis, and we come in here looking at the four misses, and we see that we have 23 megapascal. We had 28.8 megapascal with the um, inventor. It was 28.84. Now we have in a another uh, a value over here, which is uh, a, a little bit less. We'll uh, see in a minute the reason. We also want to look at the displacement, and the displacement we can uh, visualize it over here by enlarging. We see which way it deforms in the same direction as we expected, and the deformation is uh, uh, 2.2. 0 0.2 millimeters, inventor had it as uh, 2.9. Now, the reason is that we do not have enough element. To check the number of element, uh, we can come over here to the mesh tools. We look at the nodes and we see that we have in over here altogether 198, almost 200 nodes in this uh, presentation. Now, it should be mentioned that uh, Lisa is providing the programming uh, software pretty much free of charge up to 1,500 nodes. Now, we have in about one-tenth of it. So we could use this uh, program and enlarge the number of nodes and try to get at least uh, a better representation of the results. So we come over here to the mesh tools, and we do refine again. And if we refine all of it by two, then we will increase the number of nodes by eight. So this will bring us pretty much to where we want to be. So what we'll do is we'll select all the nodes. We come over here to the mesh tool. We click Refine to, and now we are ready to run the analysis again. So when we run the analysis and look at the results, then we see that the fund measures is uh, getting very close to the uh, inventor. We get here 27.6. We had in the inventor, we had uh, 28.8. Uh, so it's very close uh, in the a stress analysis, and if you want to look at the displacement in a wide direction, then uh, what we see is that it's, uh, uh, the displacement in the wide direction is uh, 2.6 millimeters, and we had 2.92 millimeters. We can again look at the deformation, and we can also animate it uh, to see the way it uh, uh, actually will uh, uh, vibrate. It's not so difficult to visualize it in this configuration, but uh, other configuration, when we do modal analysis with Lisa, it's extremely helpful. So this concludes our presentation, and what we'll do is we'll compare the two with the uh, analytical results on the next episode. Thank you.